Let's look at some random AP pre-calculus problems from section 1.1. We have ourselves a graph. Okay, a little going down, a little going up, and we have some questions about said graph, so let's answer those questions. On which interval is the graph concave up? Concave up looks like this. So our concave up starts here, still concave up, 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 and this is right about where it changes. So what we'll say is negative infinity. Now that parentheses means you don't include it, and you wouldn't include negative infinity anyway. It's a concept. And it goes all the way to zero. Now we're not gonna make a bracket, we're gonna make a parentheses because at zero is where it changes. And so the moment it changes called an inflection point is neither concave up nor concave down. So no brackets, okay? Just the parentheses, which means you don't include that number. Concave down, looks like this. And that goes from zero all the way to positive infinity. Don't include either of those numbers either. On what intervals is the graph increasing? Now, it's important to understand that graph increasing is not the same as rate of change increasing. That's concave up, concave down stuff. This is just asking, where is the graph going upwards? So this part of the graph is going downwards, and that's going to answer D, so we might as well get it out of the way. At B, it starts going upwards, increasing, and at D, it starts going downwards again. So to answer this question, we will say between B and D is where this is increasing. Now we're not going to include B and we're not going to include D because at B it goes from decreasing to increasing and at that very moment it's a flat slope, which means it's neither increasing nor decreasing. On what intervals is the graph decreasing? Well, we already answered that from negative infinity to B and then increasing, and then from D to negative or positive infinity. Now we're not gonna include things, but what we're gonna do is since there's two intervals, we say negative infinity to B, don't include it. This means union. That's when you have more than one interval. And then it's also decreasing from D to positive infinity. Okay, find the zeros of the function. The zeros are where my line crosses the x-axis, here at a, here at zero, and here at e. So we will say the zeros are when x is equal to a, when x is equal to zero, and when x is equal to e. And last but not least, find the y-intercept of the function. That's where my line crosses the y or f of x axis. And it looks like since it crosses the origin, the y-intercept is going to be 0. So why not be a little bit specific and say, well, 0, 0, the origin. Okay? Fun.